Hello everyone, this is Endgame Mark to deliver box and break down in the demo. This is Castlevania Symphony of the Night for the PlayStation 1, but this is being played on my Pi Station for HD recording quality. Now I recently came back to playing Castlevania Symphony of the Night due to the fact that Bloodstained Ritual of the Night is going to be releasing here soon this month, so I wanted to go play the original Granddaddy or the original Inspiration as well as the, 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 the starter to that series, Bloodstained. Now, Castlevania Sith in the Night does not actually hold any nostalgia memory for me. I actually didn't get into the series till like midlife of the PlayStation 3. But to go into the game and talk about it, uh, the it would be almost criminal and downplaying the game greatly if I just called it a Metrovania style game. Due to the fact that Castlevania Sith in the Night is what inspired and pushed the name Metrovania, and it put the name Vania and Metrovania. So you can know that it had a big impact in the gaming world, as well as gaming culture, as well as creating a whole genre. Due to the fact that, at the time, we only really had Metroid and Super Metroid of this kind of style, platforming, puzzle solving, and progression system, as well as like a labyrinth puzzle world. Then came out Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which really cranked up the, what Metroid created to 11 by having experience, as well as equipment gauges, as well as having evolving voice acting and story, as well as man, having many secrets and a big giant map, as well as many hidden amazing battles as well. There was so much added to the game, and to this day it's considered one of the greatest Metrovania uh, games out there, and it's still impacting games to this day, from Hollow Knight to many other greater games out there, like Dead Cells and so forth, that really take inspiration from this game. Now, story-wise, you play as Alucard. You're going into Dracula's castle to prevent him from wiping out the human race. Now, in the beginning of the game, you play as Richard Balamount, and events and conspired from that, and you have to figure out what kind of happened with that as well, and try to help a friend in the game as well. There's a lot of characters and involvement in the game, but it mostly evolves around Alucard. Now, the g Alucard isn't exactly what you call human. He is um, the son of Dracula, so he has a bigger, major influence in the castle and as well as some of the people in it. But he loves humans and tries to help them support them, even though he probably is outcasted by them. So he has some kind of involvement and interesting character into himself. But the gameplay-wise follows your typical Night Metrovania kind of hack and slash. But it's still really well done, very rewarding, as well as very challenging at very moments. And it's really fun that you can really just gain a lot of experience from just typically fighting a bunch of enemies and leveling up. So you can power grind to the game pretty quickly depending on you know what you're going to do. With a lot of variety of equipments and gears, as well as each weapon has a different variety of swings, as well as when you equip certain armors or certain capes, it can be seen visually on the character, as well as even weapons have effects as well and a visual appearance as well. So to have this much well done style and sprite works is still impressive to this day. And I simply, at, at, at all, all the time I play this game and the sprite graphics design, but again, I'm a sprite graphics junkie, so I really love the sprite graphics in the game. Or any game for that matter. But the music in the game, the setup, the story, as well as the secret hitting ending to the game, it's just very well done and amazing. I, like I said I, before, I did not get into the series till way later, and I am sad that I didn't get to join with all the love thing back then to really experience what everyone else got to experience day one, but I'm also glad that I came into the game in the later in the series, due to the fact that lots of people like to use that you're, you're blinded by nostalgia or I mean, you're just rose-tinted goggles, but even me, who I mean, didn't get into it way later, fell in love with the game immediately. I could not put the game down back then, and just coming back to it just to record this video, I just, I fell in love with it again. It's just so well polished, so well made, and so rewarding for everything you do and explore in the game. Now at the game, at the beginning, it starts a little rough, and you'll be like wondering, ah, uh, it's not nothing great. But when you get more further into the game, and locking more weapons and gears, and as well as transformations and spells, and just getting a lot stronger as a character, it gets so much more deeper and evolved. Now, I'm going to give a little bit of a spoiler. I normally don't do this, but due to the fact it's been so long, and I think it's prominent to talk about, for definitely the game, it's the secret ending of the game. Now, the, 
when I first played it, I remember beating it beginning first and was wondering that the game would tell you how many, uh, how much of the map that you explored and discovered. And I remember the percentage being like, like 49 or 52 percent. And I remember being very confused with that back then, even back on PlayStation 3. And I was like, what are you talking about? What more map? And I didn't actually discover it until, like, I actually found out about it through somebody else. I didn't discover it myself. Well, you have to beat the main boss or the main ending that you're going to think you beat the game. And you have to wear a specific set of glasses that will allow you to see the true enemy. And once you defeat that, the true castle will appear. And it's going to be a whole nother 50% of the game. It has so much more content. I mean, even when I thought I beated it, I was happy with it. And then you just add more to the game. I know that's a bit of a spoiler, but it's well worth mentioning due to the fact that I can see a lot of people just playing the game and getting at a point and beating it and th thinking they beat it when in reality they did not. They just they got like halfway through the game. It's so amazing. I would have loved to have been back there back as a kid and the person to discover that. And like, oh my god, there's more to this great game. And it's way more challenging, way more fun to play and to it. It's just... An amazing game, I, I even to this day I'm still gushy with it. I don't have the fond memories that everyone else has with it. But it's definitely still one of my most, if not the most, best uh, Castlevania game out there. And it still holds up to this day for how well and how polished and how rewarding it is to play. And just graphically, it's still well made gra sprite graphics for its time. And I would love nothing more to see like a remake or I mean, an HD enhancement version of it instead of being within the, uh, the uh, aspect ratio as it is now to have it actually take up the full screen I think it would be amazing to see of course still keep the sprite graphics of course so a remake or a remastered style would be amazing to see but I'm covering this because I'm coming back to the game and I'm loving it all over again and I'm eager to hope to play Bloodstained Ritual of the Night and hopefully it can even come close or just inspire to recreate even more games such as the Castlevania 69 did with Hollow Knight as well as Dead Cells and so many other Metrovania kind of style games out there. So if you want a recommendation, I highly recommend it. There's no other there's so many other people who's recommended this game. I'm no different. This is easily one of my most favorite games on the PlayStation 1, hands down. So like always, I will leave links down in the description for Insta Copy, which of course, again, I highly recommend. And hit that like to subscribe button if you'd like to see more of these videos from me. And I'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye-bye! Die, monster! You don't belong in this world! It was not by my hand that I'm once again given flesh. I was called here by humans who wish to pay me tribute. Tribute? You steal men's souls and make them your slaves. Perhaps the same could be said of all religions. Your words are as empty as your soul. Mankind ill needs a savior such as you. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. But enough talk. How about you?